The People's Democratic Party PDP speaks again on insecurity and asks President Buhari to start a national dialogue, while youths are encouraged to be united amidst the security concerns. And Governor Yesunwike imposes a curfew on River State to address the security situation of the state. Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has urged President Muhammad Buhari to begin a national dialogue to discuss the rising insecurity in the country. The PDP National Chairman Uche Sekundus gave the advice at the emergency meeting of the party's National Executive Committee. He said the insecurity situation in the country was alarming. And also, the Nigerian youth have uh, been advised to stay calm and united amid the rising security challenges that the country is facing. Um, well, joining us to have this conversation, I have um, MC Abe. He is a comedian um, and also someone who is an activist for social uh, justice. We also have uh, Reverend Father Edward Obi, a public affairs commentator, and Courage Nsirumovu, who is a legal practitioner. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you. It's good to be here. Pleasure to be here. Great. Honor. Great. I'm going to start with you, Father Obi, because I know that um, you work with a, a non-governmental organization and, of course, as a preacher and a man of the cloth, you obviously would be one uh, of those advocating for peace. But then we are experiencing a very, very disturbing level of insecurity and unrest um, in Nigeria as we speak. But then the PDP is asking for a national dialogue. Uh, explain to us what a national dialogue, what, what mold it would take and why it would be important if need be? Well, thank you, Mary Ann, for um, inviting me to this parley. And uh, thank you, listeners. Uh, thank you, uh, co-panelists. Um, uh, I think uh, the PDP, in asking for a national dialogue, has not um, done anything wrong. Uh, I'm not a politician, so I cannot speak for the PDP. But what I, as an ordinary Nigerian, believe is that um, the state at which uh, the country is degenerating into um, very, very uh, dangerous times uh, is alarming. And any concerned Nigerian uh, should be uh, worried about the state of affairs of our country at this time. We seem to be living in a, a place that is near to anarchy at this time. And it seems like uh, political leaders have, uh, have, have rejected the functions for which they were elected, for which they implored us to put them in power. And now Nigerians seem to be, uh, have been left to fend for themselves. So yes, I would concur with the PDP, either a national dialogue or something close to it that would actually, you know, um, uh, bring Nigerians to rediscuss and renegotiate how we wish to move forward in terms of our security architecture and everything that should bind us together as a nation. So I think the PDP is right in doing that. And I would urge other bodies, other organizations, other political entities to weigh in and to ensure that this doesn't continue to degenerate the way it is going. Father B, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm more curious as to these conversations. We've had several conversations in this country. I mean, we're discussing killings, kidnappings, banditry. Um, would it be the solution to the problem right now? Because a lot of people are advocating for action other than talk. There's been lots of talk. There's been talking tough. There's been just talk. There's been lip service. What change will this talk bring, really, in terms of what we're facing now? Because where we are, we're at the threshold of something really, really big that might just spiral it out of control. So what will talk do for us right now? Um, yeah, I think not 
Dialogue is not the solution at this time. Action should be what we do. But, but so far, we realize that um, the political authorities, especially those who are in the country at this time, are not or seem unable or incapable of putting down the kind of force that is needed to um, arrest the situation at the present time. So we think that dialogue might be able to instigate uh, or per perhaps put the proper pressure to the right places to enable um, the interventions that we do to, uh, to, to do at this present time. Let me come to you. Dialogue is not a bad idea, but action is needed. If those who are able to precipitate that seem incapable or unwilling to do so, what else can we do? Hmm. Citizens are not allowed to bear arms on their own in the law into their hands. So perhaps that with the uh, kind of a, 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 with more political entities, uh, national figure being in may be the real. Um, okay. uh, that may bring pressure to bear on the powers that, that okay. be at the time. All right, let me go to MC Abe. MC Abe, you obviously are a comedian, but you use your craft, your art, to send messages. You have shows on the radio uh, that talk and address the issues that we're facing, whether they be social, political, in Nigeria. So he's talked about dialogue also being a pathway to helping solve the problem, but... The level of insecurity that we're facing in Nigeria, according to the PDP spokesperson, Prince Uche uh, Secondus, is taking some form of uh, toll on our economy. It's taking a toll on our education. Now, people can't, children can't, can't go to school. Remember, there's a university in Kaduna State where students were abducted. So it's taking a huge toll on us as a country. Um, but let's talk about us as a people, because it looks like we keep talking but nobody gets to hear us. Now, the PDP seems to be awake to its responsibility as a political party, and now they're speaking. We've done a lot of talking. Can we be yeah. heard? Will uh, we ever be heard? And the actions that we need uh, to match uh, uh, this, can it be found mm. under this administration? Mm. Well, it, this is a very, very cogent uh, question, and... Um, uh, like you said, there have been a lot of talks and, and uh, back and forth uh, that has not um, yielded the necessary results. Uh, and I don't think um, uh, there, there's, there's no problem if we have more rooms for talk, but uh, the, 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 the bottom line is implementation of what is discussed. We, we have a problem of leadership. We have a problem where our leaders don't take the lead, where our leaders have decided to uh, uh, turn their, their faces to the other side and allow things to, to just go on. Uh, a whole lot of insecurity all over the nation, from the north to the south, to the east to the west. It, we, we, are, we are sitting in a keg of, of, of gunpowder. There's an implosion already in, in, in the country, and, and people are just waiting for the next move to cause an explosion. Things are happening everywhere, and our leaders are not taking the lead. I mean, we, we, we sit here, we look at these things, and we observe. We know that if the security agencies, if they, if they do what is right, they will, they, 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 we, can, we can achieve a, 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 a result. But, 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 but can, 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 I'm sorry, right MCRA, can, we, can agencies, we leave that yes, responsibility solely at the feet of security agencies. Let's not forget that these people also are at the mercy of the executive. Um, remember, yeah, we were all in said, this country said, where, the where if, for the first if, time, if the soldiers put out a video saying that they, they were... Play their part. Yeah. Okay, but they, they are playing their part. The fact that they have, and I'm not in any way a spokesperson for, you know, the military, but they are, the fact that they've decided to step, uh, you know, uh, just by enemy lines to fight for us, is them playing their part. But what about what they need oh, yeah, to no, carry kudos, out kudos that to the to, Kudos to the soldiers. Kudos to the military, uh, military forces. I'm talking about the government. If the government themselves, the, the, the executive, if the leadership of the country play their part towards the, 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 the security agents and towards Nigerians, we will, we, will, we will solve this issue, right? Because to me, I feel 
the problem lies with our leadership, not even with the security agencies, lies with our leadership. You can imagine how much is being budgeted every month or every, I don't know how, how often they do that, for, for security, the vote, the security vote, and what they do. Look at look, the, our, our security agencies are not well equipped. There's no proper information, uh, 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 gadgets that, that for, for them to, to tackle the issues. And our, our, our leaders are they folding their hands like I see nothing is happening. Mm. You understand? And and you bring it to them, they will, they, will, they will keep saying the same thing that they've been saying for donkey years. Uh, we are we are on top of it. We are looking into it. Uh, we are we are setting up a committee, and they will set up another committee to look into the committee. All kinds of crap. Well, that's all like kinds of crap because nothing is happening from there. Mm. Today they will come. I mean, look at what the gov look at what the governor of of, uh, of uh, um, is it the Benue State? Uh, uh, look at what he said, which which is figured out some misgrants will take those words and take that passion out of context and start to attack him. Say, why are you attacking the the, the, the the presidency? Why are you attacking the government? The government of the day is not working. The government of the day is not functioning. They failed us. They say Nigeria will soon become a failed state. Hello, we are already a failed state. Right? Just holding, what is holding us together is our individual love for ourselves. Nothing more. Interesting. It is, it is a terrible case. And if we don't make that decisive move from the, from the, uh, from the government, if the government don't take that stand, no matter how, 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 how many times we, we meet and dialogue and dialogue, the, 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 the ball falls in their court for them to make the necessary decision, uh, uh, make necessary move that, that is discovered or, or that is uh, uh, gotten from the dialogue. Okay. Do you understand? A lot of talks have been back and forth. What I mean, the government, and their, their hands are just like this. Hmm. And they cannot see that they don't know what's happening. They can't see, they don't, they don't, I mean, all over the country, if it's not kidnapping, it's a bandit, if not bandit, it's Boko Haram. No, Boko Haram is, is one thing, it's just there are problems everywhere. All right, let me bring let me bring Barista Courage into the conversation. Uh, there have been national conferences, just like I said to Father Obi. Um, we've had the national confab that was won under the Abbas and Joe administration. Good luck, Jonathan did have one, um, and really, we've not really seen anything done with whatever resolutions that were, you know, made at the end of the day. So again, it makes. You, an ordinary taxpayer wonder why there should be another convergence uh, of whatever we want to call it, a national dialogue, uh, a town hall, a national town hall, if there's nothing that would be done with the resolutions, even if, even if it's one that is being used or implemented. Uh, if we don't see the body language of the government as one that wants to make use of those ideas that are put together, and placed before the table of Mr. President, why waste taxpayers' monies on it? And, and do you believe that that's what we need right now? Or maybe we should be going another route? Um, thank you for that um, question. Um, of course, we've had um, national dialogues. The question is, um, what were the outcomes of those national dialogues? And are they relevant in um, the present day? Um, so, you know how the Bible says, come, let us reason. I don't think um, it's um, actually a bad call from the PDP for us to have um, a national dialogue. Um, but the question... Uh, Courage, I think we're losing you there. Um, I'm going to take this question back to uh, Father Obi. Uh, if we really are ready to fight this insecurity, because I also, always think, I, I'm sorry, uh, Courage. I'm, I'm sorry. I think we have to deal with Courage's uh, internet, and then we'll get back to him. Um, so, Father Obi, I was asking, if we really are ready to fight insecurity, uh, why aren't we doing so? Why, do, why does the government of the day, who took an oath to protect and to um, protect us, our properties and our lives, wait for us to scream and, uh, and cry out to them to deal with this issue of insecurity. Is this not a pointer to the fact that maybe because it's not hitting close to home, government is not prioritizing our safety? I might be wrong, but you can correct me. Well, um, many Nigerians have been left to wonder 
why it would take so long for those whom, to whom we have given the power to protect us, uh, for them to react to these issues. Because it seems that we have been abandoned and Nigerians are digging in deep and seeking other ways, alternative ways of addressing the security issues that attack, that uh, confront them. It seems to me that the, the, there is a complete abandonment of shift here. Because we have a government in name, we have a president sitting, but we never hear from him. Re, uh, attacks of all kinds occur from time to time. We hear nothing, no condemnation of it. And it seems to me that the bandits or whatever they are called are further emboldened by this silence because they believe somehow that somebody right at the top has their back. And, and this cannot uh, function uh, make a country function properly because uh, uh, when citizens um, devise their own methods of protecting themselves, it cannot be organized and it cannot sue for peace. So I think once again that, yes, whereas it's way past the time for dialogue, dialogue is never too late. This is my own opinion. Yeah. Hmm. MC Abbe, um, young people uh, have been asked to be calm. In fact, I'd like to quote the Pan-African Youth Union, which uh, under their auspices called for young people to... Um, be calm because of all the security breaches and the insecurity with all that is happening. Should, I mean, well, nobody's asking for anarchy, but unity, calling for unity at this point and asking for young people to be calm, especially when young people tried to come together. Uh, I mean, we, all, we were all here when they came together and said enough is enough. We cannot be profiled wrongly and, you know, um, bitten, battered and harassed by police officers they were being shot at. Why would young people want to come together again for any reason in this country, especially at a time where every single person is now a target and our governments seem not to be doing anything about it? Uh, fantastic. And uh, I think on um, the case of young people, what we practically need right now, yes, we need to be calm. Uh, we cannot... Um, we cannot go violent. We cannot uh, cause anarchy. Uh, there is need for calmness, but there's also need for strategic uh, uh, planning and strategic projections uh, by young people. This is the time where young people start engaging themselves. Different uh, pressure groups start engaging themselves strategically with, with, uh, with solutions, preferring solutions, bringing to the table how and what can, what can be done. Uh, um, this is a time we need to speak uh, truth to power uh, on the the, uh, the the situation of the nation. We, we, this is a time we need to uh, stand for what is right and, and do it in, in such a strategic way that we don't come out being violent. We need, to, we need to lend our voice. We need to keep speaking. We need to have that optimism of hope that uh, Nigeria will be better or can be better again because, I mean, this is the only country we have. It goes down, we all go down. If it burns down, we all burn. Uh, but we, we need to devise uh, uh, a better means of, of approach. Uh, no more uh, violent route, but a, a more strategic think tank engaging ourselves, uh, projecting ourselves and positioning ourselves towards uh, a better Nigeria. And I think if we do that, uh, now it would uh, it it would add give us more credit and and put the put give a, a redirection or refocusing of the nation because there are a whole lot of things have to be talked about. You know, they, they, when you try to shut the young minds from speaking truth, uh, they, what they don't understand is they are they are, they are trying to cut short the the destiny or the future or the power line or the fuel of this nation. You know, and we will not we will not subject to that. We will not agree that we'll be, uh, our mouth should be shut. No, but we will speak truth to power. Mm -hmm. We should start engaging ourselves, talking about the unity of this nation. How can we be united? What's about restructuring? What, where, 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 where is the place of the constitution? Are we going to have a new constitution? What is the move of getting a new constitution? What are we talking about? I, I mean, should we talk about, should, should we engage uh, 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 the different units of the, of the nation? Let's know if we really want to stay together. 
Let's know if we if we are if we are, have agreed to be one. Let's let's have a dialogue. Let's let's discuss on how can how can we uh, uh, have a fair share, uh, 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 being together as, as as one. What are you contributing? What am I contributing? Mm -hmm. What 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 are the red flags? Where where are the the, the, the lines that we should not be crossed? Let's have this conversation. Let's engage ourselves, engage our minds. The, uh, not, 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 not just in, in the place of, of leadership uh, 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 or, or in government alone, but leadership in, 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 uh, in development, leadership in IT, leadership in, in uh, 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 what, um, what, 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 I'm short of words, but leadership in, in, okay. in, in structural development. Let, okay. Let's, let's put positioning the country in, 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 the, in, this, in the place where the globe would look at Nigeria and they would love to, to, to identify with us. We need to we need to do image laundering. We need to we need to clean up our, our mess. We need to we need to project our strength. We need to show for the things that, that we are good at. We okay. need to celebrate them. We need to empower ourselves. You know, look at look at SMEs. I mean it's it's it has been bastardized in this country. In this country. Nobody empowering I mean uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are just there working hard for themselves. The government is not doing. We need to engage ourselves and start talking about things, talking about these uh, these issues, so that we can have a, a drive, a focus, you know, and position ourselves correctly to, if I permit me to use the word, to take over. Yes. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's the right time. If the time is right for that to be. Okay. You know, let, right. let bright minds take over. All let right. bright minds be in place of, of authority. All I mean, right. it's, it's, it's high time we do that. I, yeah. I, I hope that courage is back with us. Courage, are you there? Can you hear me? I can hear you clearly, clearly. Perfect, perfect. Great, great, great. So let me pose this question to you. Um, the very famous and somewhat controversial um, man of the cloth, Reverend Father Mbaka, is back in the news now, and he's been asking for the president to step down because uh, of his inability to handle the, in the situation in the country as fair security. Um, he's also um, asked that the National Assembly impeach Mr. President. Um, because he has been incapable of keeping the people of Nigeria safe. Now, not just that, the APC has responded with Swifts. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, swiftly, they have responded to Father Mbaka. In fact, they have threatened to expose him. But then, of course, let's talk about communication and how it flows within this government and, and their response towards issues, be they, be they interesting, be they expedient, be they important, and uh, sometimes maybe trivia. Uh, in this case, what should have been the response of the government in dealing with this kind of situation? A and, and the response that the government is giving, does it reflect a government that's really willing to do the beating of the people and to secure the lives of their people? Or is it just a government that's more interested in how people speak to them or how people address them? First of all, our um, father and Baka, as a citizen of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, he has the right to oh dear. I think the freedom of expression. To today. It's a legal call. The call he has made is a legal call. Oh dear. We're going to have to let um, Courage go because he, he's having problems with his internet. But um, Father Obi, that is your colleague in the cloth. Um, would yes. you like to speak on what he has said? I mean, of oh, course, yes. everybody would say there's nothing wrong with what he has said, but I, again, I'm looking at the body language of the government and the yeah. response to his call. Yes. Um, um, well, this is, this is interesting because um, Father Mbaka is my colleague, and um, we as priests uh, are not supposed to meddle in politics or play active partisan politics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he somehow doubled into it before uh, the same Buhari that he now is calling to step down uh, was elected. And then since then, he has remained in that fray, occasionally uttering uh, things uh, positive or negative against the incumbent. Now he is being threatened naturally. If you dance with a pig, one day the pig will pull you into the mud. Whereas the pig will enjoy the mud, you might not find it funny at all. That perhaps is the situation that Father Mbaka finds himself now. But picking up from what my other panelist was saying, um, yes, as a citizen of this country, 
we all have the responsibility to, to nurture our country, to nurture thought, to direct our thinking towards what is right. If he has the inspiration and the boldness to ask Buhari to resign, um, this is not an unusual thing. Citizens in other countries, uh, in better climes, uh, do not even have to ask their uh, political officials to resign. Those officials resign as a matter of their own integrity. So I, I think um, I could join my voice to him by asking the president, since he has demonstrated so manifestly uh, the incapacity to contain the violence or check the insecurity, perhaps he should just bow out honorably and leave others who perhaps have a better idea to, on how to run things to step onto the fray. Oh, well, unfortunately, we do not have more time. I would have loved to have MC uh, uh, input on this, but we have to go. Thank you very much, Father B is a, a Reverend Father, and he is also a public affairs analyst. We also had um, MC Abe. He's a comedian, very renowned one, and is also uh, one of those people who is or could be referred to as a change agent. And we were also joined by Barista Courage and Sir Morville, whose internet has not allowed him to really be part of this conversation. But thank you, gentlemen, for being here. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thanks for inviting us. All right, well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we River State Governor imposes uh, a curfew on the state. We'll get to find out why.